folks. Dave here at Scorch Parts. Um, so it's been a few weeks since we put in the world record run. Uh, I've had loads of questions as you can imagine of people asking me about the car and what's in there. Um, we're just a few weeks away from the next Rosser event now so I'm just about to tear this down to get ready for the next event. I've not really touched it much um, since his last run, so you might have saw the yeah the big crash it had. So she's a little bit beaten up, but not not too bad. Uh, but I thought I'd just uh, have a run through with you and show everybody what's actually in the build. Because um, a lot of it's just um, Scotch parts, standard parts, and um, there's not there's not much real custom stuff in there. With uh, yeah, we, we've we've got our uh, diff housings, the aluminium diff housings. Adjustable um, hinge pin holders there. Obviously our axles, um, rear hub carriers. Um, we've got the M2C um, wheel hexes, which were fantastic, and yeah, they solved the problem for us. Um, a lot of people have asked about the turn buckles, and um, these are kind of handmade specials using um, uh, Dunlop uh, engineering grade rod ends. They're a bit of a pain to make, to be honest, but maybe other people can replicate them. You have to, uh, these are actually M3 ones that you drill out to M4 and retap them, so they're kind of a nuisance to make, which is why I don't actually sell them. But they're, they're really nice rod ends and kind of engineering grade quality there. Um, inside our diffs, we're running the Hobeo um, 1540 gears, um, which means we're running. 8 mil pinion and we've so we've got our 8 mil drive cups there um so yeah it's top brace is exactly the same as you'd, you'd buy for the other ones it's just a longer version got the little brace eliminator spacer um shocks <laughs> we run on this car we run locked out front and back partly just due to the weight we I couldn't find a a good way of using um, springs. There's so much flex in everything anyway that with it, with this weight of car you, you, you don't need any springs. Um, we've also got twin TP motors using our dual mount. The dual rotor lock's particularly good because um, as you can see on the front face you've got these vernier adjust marks. And the way these work is that every 0.1 of a millimetre of adjustment, the next mark aligns up. So as you can see all the way around, so you can normally find some marks that, let me, let me go back and focus, maybe some marks that will uh, will line up. And what that means when you set in particularly big motors like this, when you've got a dual motor, they when, when the teeth engage, they fight each other. So if you've got one engaged, it's almost impossible to set the mesh on the other one because you can't you can't feel if you've got clearance there or not. Um, but with the rotor lock, it's really easy because you can move move one motor away and set the first the mesh on the first one. See where you the marks are aligned, and sometimes I just use a marker pen so I don't forget. And just mark where they're aligned so you see those two lines are perfectly lined up and then back that one off go to the other side set the other side set the mesh on the other side until the, that mesh is perfect and then when you come back to this one you just turn it in until those marks are aligned again and boom you know you've got absolutely perfect mesh um, I, I don't know how, i don't even know how you do it with it with any of the other mounts because yeah the, the two motors just fight each other and it makes it really difficult to set the mesh. Um, <clears throat> then because of the length of this car, what we've actually used is the two uh, end plates from one of our rotor mounts with a spool in the middle um, so that we've got an extra shaft in the middle to, to get the length. I wasn't sure if that was going to work, but it actually worked great. and. Um, yeah, I mean, this car's done quite a lot of runs now and it, it, everything held, held up perfectly. Uh, on, on that point, we've got the um, Trident front shaft there. 
which is uh, yeah i just just can't say how, how pleased i am with how that's worked because the anybody who's run an armor sort of over particularly over 170 mile an hour just knows how much trouble those front pins are because of the kick up angle at the front you just chew through those pins like no tomorrow whereas yeah this completely solves the problem if you consider how much heat gets generated that you actually melt the pins away it's also saving a lot of energy it's far more efficient running on the bearings so it just runs cleanly and efficiently yeah and this has just been doing yeah multiple 200 mile an hour runs 190s 180s and it's just it's held together absolutely fine that this there's nothing else that's going to hang together as well as that trident does um so whilst we're in there we've got our um uh, solo saver delete system which is kind of a, an essential by the time you're going anything like this fast because yeah the servo saver is just too soft um you know and you, you don't you don't want that taking away what your servo is trying to put into your wheels so a loose screw there which is why you have to check these things and rip them down before the next build um what else have we got? So the front knuckles, so what, yeah, we've got our front knuckles in there. Um, I think these were the first, first type ones. Yeah, they're, they're doing a fantastic job and allow you to have really, yeah, nice, nice free running, nicely adjusted steering. Um, I actually run the um, shorter uh, stub plates there. So they're from the, the fire team stub plates. I run those a little bit shorter because at this angle you, you, you get less play with those whereas with the longer one that has the rod end kind of over here somewhere you, you get more play it's a little bit less direct so i prefer to run the fire team ones um, so front obviously there's arms and everything are all standard armor these are custom towers to particularly suit this this car. We've got the servo mounted up front and a bit of a Sabox fan, so we're running the Sabox 2292, which is yeah, awesome servo, I really like it. Um, so, custom carbon splitter for this body, so we've got the yeah, great big long body, which is a custom made body that I've made, I've made a mould for that, and um, yeah, this is. I've made a couple of these so far um, I need to make another one now for the next build and um, they're a little bit big for our old vac forming machine so they're kind of a nuisance to make so you can see I'm making three sections um, but yeah that's proved to be extremely strong so yeah I need to get another one made because that one's had its day and he's going on the wall um, obviously XLX2 um, batteries are all stripped out of it at the moment. We're going to be putting new batteries in in a couple of weeks. We're going to be trying new wheels over the next week or two as well. Um, trying to solve some of the challenges that we have with the foams. Um, chassis is basically the same as all of the sh chassis that we sell for the armour. So you can see it's kind of the same, the same parts all bolted together but it's just kind of stretched and made a little bit wider to suit that body um, I have been running um, a steering gyro on this so you can see that's the GYC441 gyro I'm not sure whether I need it or not I've ran without it I ran with it and I can't tell a huge difference I think it's when things start to go wrong that it might do something for you so it's very difficult to tell exactly what it is or isn't doing um, my my advice to anybody is always run your car without a gyro and make sure your car's handling right first. Um, I think the gyro is kind of a get out of jail thing, but if your car's not handling properly, you definitely don't want to mask it with that first. You want to know that your car is running straight before you, you plug anything like that in it. Um, Oh, we, and we've got our, uh, or very similar to, to what I saw, is the quick release um, side body retainers. 
they've proved to be fantastic as well, particularly with this big body where, you know, I've got, how many have I got? 10 fixings on it. Yeah, the quick release screws have been fantastic, absolutely love those. Um, the rear diffusers, the diffuser that we sell with our Hobeo full length um, full kit, um, which is like a vacuum form part. It's, it's not the fanciest part, but it certainly does the job. And uh, we're using it here because it, it suits this body better than the standard armor one does. And I think that's kind of covered most of the things, most of the questions people have been asking. But yeah, as you can see, it's just a, a lot of our parts on, on top of the armor chassis and kind of stretched out. That's the build and wish me luck on the next iteration and hopefully we'll be running in there. Uh, what have we got now? Less than three weeks. So I've not got long to prep for the next one. Cheers guys.